Professor Smith from Youngstown University brought two groups of students from his ethics class to learn about cow protection. What follows is a discussion with those classes. We've gone to the sale barns, we've gone to dairies, uh, we you know, either bought them or they've been given to us. Um, they live out their lives until they die a natural death. So it's from birth to death, well, most of the time from birth to death, um, that they're taken care of. So we want to show people that they are more valuable alive than dead, even if they're not giving milk. In farming, you need fertilizer to maintain the health of the soil. So the cows are going to eat grass. They're going to turn that grass in, into cow manure. In, in America, cow manure is referred to as farmer's gold. It's very valuable. It's the best of all manures for maintaining health of the soil in an organic way. So showing that they're more valuable alive because they provide manure for fertilizer. Urine, according to the Shastras, the scriptures in India, there's a whole section which is um, just for medicine. It's called Arya Veda. Arya is medicine and Veda is the section of the scriptures. Okay, so urine is very valuable, not just for, for medicine, it's very, it's very valuable for kidney problems, for uh, liver, uh, it's being distilled in India now, um, and different herbs are being added to it, whether it's for diabetes, uh, whatever, and this is proving to be as coming back as uh, showing the value of the cows. Um, milk is there. Milk is a first-class food. So we don't want to um, continue on the, the killing in order to get milk. Wouldn't there be like a crazy overpopulation of animals? If you're demanding, then somebody's got to make the supply. But if the demand decreases, and people start going more and more towards a vegetarian lifestyle where you don't have to kill these innocent creatures, then that demand is going to dwindle. The balance of nature is going to become more and more uh, feasible. It's because people are demanding. If the farmer can't make you know, a profit, He's going to have to decrease, otherwise he's going to become terribly involved in debt. And they're like white, and they're full of chickens in cages going to the slaughterhouse. Okay. If people stopped eating chickens, if they saw where their chickens came from, if they had to go into the chicken houses and grab the chickens and put them in the cages and load them on the trucks, they're going to stop eating chickens. It's a matter of education based on ethics. This is what I'm causing. I'm not going to do it. So the, your ethics class is to bring about a change of consciousness. What I am living, the way I'm living, is it actually ethical, moral, spiritually ethical? Or am I exploiting God's um, resources? for my own sense gratification. These are things that we have to examine in our life. I can't kill. I grew up in Hawaii. We were open ocean fishermen. Tuna, big tuna, 500, 600, 800 pounds. And I'm looking at, you know, I've got this big fish and, and I'm fighting him. And he's jumping out of the water and he's got this big hook in his mouth. And I'm looking at myself and I'm going, I'm causing this, this living entity in this fish body so much pain so I can have my tuna fish sandwich. I'm causing him pain. I don't live in the water. <laughs> it's, not my, it's not my natural environment. I became a vegetarian right away. We would go spear fishing spearing fish and you can see they're struggling just to stay alive. Again, I'm causing pain so I can have something to eat. 
when there's so much to eat without causing pain. No, I mean, I totally agree. I feel bad when I have my fish in a fish tank at home, but it's like if you don't kill to eat, there's going to be cows everywhere. It's a matter of changing consciousness. That's, that's the whole thing. Ethics is changing consciousness. What we are doing, is it ethical? In the dairy, the cow has a calf. Immediately that calf is taken away. If you go on YouTube, if you go on Facebook, there's all kinds of you know, videos and about uh, the atrocities in the dairy industry. We're causing that. So if you want to have dairy, find a dairy that's doing ethical farming. The calves are not taken away from the mothers as soon as they're born. They're not put into veal crates for 16 weeks, chained. The crate is so small they can't turn around. There's no muscle development. They're fed um, milk replacer so that the meat stays very white or pinkish. And at 16 weeks, they're killed. That's their whole life. So people can have their very soft veal. All the bull calves, they're not trained to work. They're not trained to uh, be engaged in agriculture. But everybody is using tractors. Anyway, study it. You know, trace your food back. See where it comes from. I think what she's trying to get at is in terms of numbers. Yeah. There, there, there's huge quantities, but that's uh, what, what you're trying to say, and I think she's not quite grasping at this point, is that um, in, in the way things are done now, there's so much in terms of the, the amount that's being used that these animals are being forcibly impregnated. They're being made to create more and more and more and more animals for the slaughterhouse. Whereas if you do away with that and use the vegetarian, uh, go to the vegetarian system, then it's only what's produced naturally and that's going to be considerably less than what we have now. So that's where it's not going to run amok and you'll end up with all these, all these numbers. We're kind of at a starting point of, of consciousness change. So yeah, there's gazillion animals that it looks like it's, we're overpopulated, which we are. But as the consciousness change within society, the number of the animals will also decrease. And their care and the way that they're, they're taken care of will increase in quality. But it's going to take all of us, you know, not just one or two people. But you can see over the last 10, 15 years, so many people are, are becoming vegetarians, so many people are becoming vegans. And it's not because they don't like to eat, you know, dairy. They just can't, uh, within their hearts, they can't support these activities. So they're saying, so it's a change. Now Balabhadra takes the groups to meet the cows. They first meet the cows in the barn. Then the babies greet them. In the end, everyone receives ISCAP literature. 